und schon kann sehen. Don't worry, we will cover. Avengers assemble! Oh, hello, and welcome to the Beta Gamers. I'm Dan, and uh, this is build mode, and uh, this is part three of my Marvel Crisis Protocol table build. And uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, putting together the seabed, and uh, putting together all of the... Um, details around the uh, the seabed like sunken ships and rocks and all of that stuff getting it ready for the uh, for the paint and then for hopefully the uh, the water effects on top of that so let's get to uh, the building shall we broken that So let's have a look at some of the materials and tools that uh, we're going to use in this uh, next part of the build. Really important part, the sculptor mould. This stuff we're going to use to create uh, uh, the base and the, uh, the sort of uneven land of the seabed. We've got a rock mould, some rocks that I've already made with just some leftover resin from uh, other projects that I was doing. I've got some uh, some slate rock, and then I've got some different sort of grades of sands and, and stone just to create some sort of nice uneven texture. We've got some Mod Podge, always good stuff. Gets a thumbs up from me every time. Some water and a brush, probably gonna need that. Um, some of the all-purpose filler, just in case we need to fill any bits in or make some sort of, you know, sort of larger lumps that we can then put the sculptor mold over. I've then got my bits box here, so uh, I thought I'd uh, crack open some all sorts of different bits uh, that we could use with this uh, this build. So um, I was thinking in this corner over here to have like a, a staircase down, and then have the uh, the jetty, like the wooden jetty. This is actually from a, a GW kit. I think it's the uh, the Lake Town kit, but you know it's just sort of generic kind of wooden slated jetty with sort of bits and pieces. And same with the. Uh, the little boat here so I thought I'd have the staircase going down and then have the jetty come out here so that's what we're going to use some of the styrofoam and the uh, polystyrene left over from the uh, the main build I'm going to use that to create that and I think we're going to do that first so let's crack on so here I've, uh, I've kind of mapped out what I want to achieve from it I've got I've used Baron Zemo here just as a sort of guide to uh, sort of see how wide I want this kind of ledge to be. But the idea is it's like one of those dockside staircases that you get to go into the water, obviously you can vary in sea levels. So all I've done is cut some of the styrofoam here and I've done like almost about 10 mil, one centimeter stairs. So I've just done them seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Worked out how many stairs that I needed, used a polystyrene block to fill that in. And now all I'm gonna do is kind of cut these to well, cut them to, oh, they actually fit in not too bad. Just because this wall is curved, I thought I might have trouble fitting that in. So this one here, I'm just gonna need to cut that back a little bit to fit in, but you kind of get the idea. So the next step is to glue that all in. And for that, we're gonna use Modge Podge. So, so let's do that. The, uh, the staircase has gone together nicely. Uh, got it into position using some Mod Podge just to stick that through. Obviously, we're gonna let that all dry. Now I've got my uh, little jetty pieces here now I've just got I'm just using spare bits that I had left over from the kit that I was doing before so I'm just coming up with some ideas for configuration of the way I want it to look obviously I've marked out where the uh, the main ship is gonna go so this is just sort of decoration um, I've also marked out this line here is actually the deployment area so uh, if you were to be playing this way across the board just trying to give it a, a section where you know might be able to stand a character for example on the boat ready for deployment, <laughs> ready for battle. Um, but I've come up with the idea that I think what I'm gonna do, obviously this is gonna be up this level here. So around this area in here, I think I'm gonna build up more of a rocky outcropping, have this sit on top of that, and then the rocks kind of sort of cascade down. And then this bit will be obviously up here and uh, suspend on the water. So the next job is to create that. So back to some polystyrene blocks, I think. So these are just some random chunks that, uh, that I broke off from the, the main bit of polystyrene. And the idea is just to, to get the, the rough shape of what you want to achieve. So uh, I'm just shoving them in uh, with a bit of Mod Podge to glue them down. 
now comes the fun part, mixing some sculptor mold. Now this stuff is awesome and uh, thanks for Loop APS for recommending it for these sorts of projects. And what you want to do is mix two parts of this stuff with uh, one part water and then get grubby and mix it with your hands. Now this bit can get quite messy. And uh, as you can see here, I've decided to do it with my hands. But, you know, if you were clever, you might uh, use some sort of tool or maybe, you know, an old spoon or an old wooden spoon or something like that. But, you know, I don't mind getting messy, so I'm just going to dig my hands in there and uh, give that a good stir around. Yummy. It sort of goes like cottage cheese, as you can see there. So get it until you've got a nice consistency. You don't want it too watery because that will mess it about when you come to apply it onto your board. Um, so you want it to, you know, sort of set in good time so you can work with it and sort of, you know, make it into the shape you want. So again, so you can see it all covered over my hands, I'm just gonna add it onto the polystyrene shape that I made earlier and give the sort of land structure some form uh, and just build it up to the uh, the banks there. Now, don't worry too much if you get it where you don't want it to go. Um, as you can see on the on the left-hand side there, on the, the wood of, of, you know, I've just got the stuff everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it was fun, don't get me wrong. Uh, you can just clean it off with just a, a wet uh, brush, which you'll, you'll see me doing later. So just cover it all over the area that you want. And then as it starts to dry, you can you sort of smooth it over um, to give the sort of shape exactly what you want. Now I'm using it to cover the entire base of the seabed. That way it doesn't look completely flat. Now it's looking pretty messy at the moment, but I can start adding in some of our rocks from our rock mold. Got a fair few sort of bigger ones here. So at this point you can just push the uh, the, the rocks from the rock mold into the sculptor mold. Uh, it'll hold it in shape long enough for you to uh, sort of get to uh, you know a, a shape and a structure that you're happy with. So just continue doing that with enough of the larger rocks to you to you're happy with the uh, overall look of it. If you've got other structures that you're adding to it, then uh, add those on at this point as well, just to make sure that everything fits together at the end. So I didn't want any rocks on the top there protruding over the top enough that it would uh, block where I could put down the little jetty. And then what I'm doing now is just taking a wet brush and kind of blending the sculptor mold as it's still wet into those rocks, just to basically hide them and sort of blend them into the surroundings so they look more natural. Like I said before, if you do get white up the uh, the side of the wood there, just wet your brush and then just brush brush it off. Um, we can always add a little bit more of the wood stain uh, at the end anyway to uh, to clean it up. So uh, yeah, as you can see that rock formation is coming together nicely. Once we've got our uh, main rock structure in place, uh, I'm now moving on to the smaller uh, like slate rock that, um, that I totally didn't nick out of my neighbor's garden, uh, just to add some more definition. Now these kind of rocks are obviously a lot smaller than the main rock features, so we're just gonna sort of fit those in between the uh, the others. Again, that, that would just sort of make a more sort of natural looking structure. So fill in any gaps where you've got, you know, big areas of, of sculptor mold, and uh, yeah, and then as you can see, it's looking looking pretty cool. Get them in until you're completely happy, and then again use the brush and wet it a little bit and blend the uh, sculpt mold into the edges. So here comes the uh, the fun and messy part. Grab a whole bunch of uh, the sculpt mold, big handfuls of the stuff, and just shove it on your seabed floor. Uh, now we're going to create that undulated land, uh, that sort of uneven texture that we want to create the uh, the seabed. Now I'm going to build it up quite a lot against the uh, against the wall there, so. Um, 
looking at some sort of reference photos on Google, you can sort of see that in those dock sides, you get real build up of just mud and sort of silt and all sorts of sort of mineral deposits from the from the muddy water. So I'll build that up quite high. I'm then just going to take a wet brush and uh, any excess that's off on that stonework effect, I'm just going to brush down. And then as the uh, the sculptor mold starts to sort of dry, you can actually just smooth it out with your hand and get it to a, a, a nice shape. So I'm just going to run my hand up and down and uh, smooth that over to create a nice sort of not even but you know sort of sort of nice wavy formation to the uh, to the seabed. So keep doing that until you're happy with the overall shape, and then we're ready for the next step. So here we are, this is the bottom of the seabed so far. I've added a couple more details, um, including this sort of sunken half ship, which I literally just stuck on with some super glue, added a bit of the sculptor mold around the edges, and then just uh, applied some um, larger rocks just to sort of uh, blend it in. And here we go with the uh, the rocky outcropping, or you know the rocks sort of built up underneath the water there. And uh, all I've done is the uh, technique of using the old scrunched up tin foil just to add a bit of texture onto the uh, the concrete there. Next step is to uh, to fill some more of this in with some more sand, um, sort of a fine sand. Uh, and then when we've got like areas, if we look here, like this kind of built up at the bank, um, you kind of get like a, a build up of just mud and you know sort of deposits of like you know, mud, sand, dirt and grime. So we're going to leave some areas smooth and just uh, go over some of them in the sand. So let's do that next. This is kind of the next grade down in sand. So you saw us using the rock moulds, you saw us using the slate um, and the, the sort of larger stones to fill in between. Now this is kind of uh, an excise down, a more finer sand, but still with loose little bits of gravel in, just to give a little bit more sort of definition and texture. So I just used the Mod Podge, dob on, lob, globs a bit all over the place, try and get an uneven, more natural kind of pattern to it. Uh, and then just sprinkle your sand from the uh, from the top brush off any excess uh, once it's dry now with this next part uh, I've used some just some basic artist acrylic black paint mixed in with some Mod Podge um, just to go over the area that the jetty is going to go over because I'm not going to be able to get in there afterwards to, to paint because you know there's no brushes that small. Um, I've, I'm literally just doing this because um, once I've stuck the jetty on, I won't be able to get the brush down there. So this will just add a little bit of um, colour uh, to to the area. So once that black is dry, uh, we can now move on to just some just some light greys. Um, I'm not sure exactly what colours I'm going to use on the uh, the painting of this area once we come to paint the entire thing, but these are just a couple of little rocks that might appear through the jetty from underneath. Um, so I'm just giving them a, a light dry brush of both uh, Mechanica Standard Grey, um, Administratum Grey, and then a nice sort of light Celestial Grey. And again, that's just because we won't be able to get a paintbrush to them uh, later on. I think you'll agree the uh, the greys there actually uh, do catch um, the edges of the uh, the rocks nicely and it's starting to look like a nice little rock formation. Also the concrete of the stairs will be a similar colour anyway so yeah it's uh, looking quite nice. Now we can start fitting the jetty in. So as you can see here I've got that, that same piece that I've been sort of test fitting as I go along and I've just added in a couple of uh, balsa wood uh, strips that I've cut to the, the same uh, length and sort of width uh, of the posts that were on the original DW piece uh, and then I've just cut them down so they'll fit perfectly in that area and I want because that's now painted uh, underneath we can stick that down and start working on the rest of the jetty 
So there's my the rest of my balsa wood strips. Again, this, this was just a, a cheap bit of balsa wood that I bought from a local hobby store. Literally cost me like 50p uh, for a sort of big plank of it. So I just cut the, the right shape and size that I need. Um, chafered the, the edges a little bit so they weren't perfectly square. You know, so they looked a bit sort of banged up and damaged. Add in a little bit of extra sort of wood grain and texture by using a wire brush. And then I've just literally stuck them on the bottom of the, the jetty piece to match where the, uh, um, the little sort of wooden bits come up on the other side as well. So it's just a case of uh, getting those on, making sure, because obviously the, the land is, is not completely flat at this point. So a lot of your jetty sort of posts are gonna be random heights or different lengths, if you will. Um, so we're gonna have to keep working and cutting bits off until we get to a position where we're happy. So I've started at one end and then I'm just gonna slowly go across uh, the, the length of the jetty and add in all of the extra poles. Now you can just stick the balsa wood with a little bit of super glue. Um, my super glue of choice is Gorilla Glue, uh, and it's a nice thick super glue gel. Um, so it's it's really nice and simple and easy to use. It doesn't run all over the place, which is great. So you can just put a little dob of that on, and then get um, get stuck together. Now we've got the, the jetty piece stuck to our board, we're just gonna take some more of the Mod Podge and blend in the, uh, the, the poles of the, or the, you know, the posts of the jetty into the uh, seabed. And by doing that, um, it will look a lot more natural. So we can just take globs of the Mod Podge, put it around the base, and then add some of our smaller rocks, some of our you know larger ones if you like as well, just to blend that in. And uh, you see here, I'm just sprinkling it on in the, in the right areas to achieve that. So now that all of the, the main structures of the seabed uh, and the jetty are complete, uh, what I'm now gonna do is make a mix of the black acrylic paint with some Mod Podge and some water uh, and I'm gonna coat the entire board in this. Now this is not only gonna protect it, but it's also gonna form like an, an undercoat, if you will, so it's ready for, for the main painting stage. Now it did take quite a while, I'm using a, a small brush. I would suggest using a slightly bigger one. Um, the smaller one I use around the edge just so I don't get black paint all over the, uh, the nice wooden effect. Um, so nice and easy, just get that in. Now the, the Mod Podge does have a slight bit of resin in it, that's what gives it a nice sort of hardness at the end. So not only is it gonna protect us, but it's gonna look cool as well. So get all that all over your board, and uh, yeah, done. So here we have guys, the uh, the finished effect. Now I'm really happy with the way this uh, part of the build has come together. I think the agree the little jetty area is looking really cool. Uh, and when we start adding more paint, start you know layering it up, adding vegetation and stuff like that, it's gonna look even cooler. We've got a nice dark tone for our tarmac there. Um, so yeah, we're looking good. So. There you have it guys, part three of the uh, the table build done and dusted. And uh, as you can see, I also got the chance to uh, paint up some of the villains. 
Uh, I wanted to paint Ultron for ages because he just looks so cool since I've had the box actually. <laughs> but he's finally done. Uh, so they are the gribbly nastiness of the uh, villains. So uh, yeah, join us next time for uh, part four. We're actually going to get some paint on this thing uh, and hopefully get it up to a, a stage where it looks awesome uh, and a stage that we can actually add in the uh, the water effect. So as always, you know, please do give us a like, um, give us a comment if you uh, got something to say or if you want to give us some ideas for the build in the uh, in the future. Then. Uh, Please do leave a comment and uh, we'll see you next time for some more building of Marvel. See you soon. Bye bye.